Well, hello and very warm welcome to my weekly vlog. Now, this week we are back discussing one of our most popular subjects. Yes, it's menopause. Menopause matters. And joining me today is Dr. Samantha Wild, who is a GP and the clinical lead for women's health at Bupa Health Clinics. And if you have got your copy of Lizelle Wellbeing magazine in, re in real time, then eagle-eyed readers will have spotted Dr. Sam from a feature in the latest July-August edition. And that was really very much looking at how the Bupa menopause plan is ensuring that all women can have access to top healthcare during this sometimes very difficult transition. And obviously I've spoken so much in the past about talking to GPs and doctors and getting proper evidence-based healthcare for women. So I'm really delighted that we're going to have this conversation today. And Dr. Sam is here today to tell us really why now is the best time to tackle the often life-limiting symptoms that we are all too familiar with of the menopause, from hot flushes to insomnia, anxiety to brain fog and more. And she's going to be sharing some advice on the best treatment options for all of us. So welcome, Sam. It's very nice that you could join Thanks. us here. Thank you. Uh, lovely to have you with us. And for those watching in real time, watching or listening in real time, we are hopefully seeing the end uh, at the end really of, of lockdown restrictions starting here in the UK. How do you think that's affected women over the last 15, 16 months or so of the pandemic in relation to menopause particularly? Uh, thanks, Liz, for that lovely introduction. So we know that the pandemic has really affected women. Um, the menopause is a diff difficult time for us anyway. Um, we know that the timing is, is just never right. So it comes for a lot of women at the time when they might be juggling sort of midlife stresses, so workload, children um, leaving home or coming back from university. Yeah. They may have younger teenagers that, you know, can be a handful at times. They might be dealing with relationship problems or elderly parents. So it really is that sandwich generation. Yeah. Um, so already to have that to deal with. And then obviously with pan the pandemic, we've had other issues such as homeschooling, um, maybe illness in the family, not being able to visit elderly parents. Yeah. So for women, they just haven't been able to prioritise their health. And it's understandable that it's all just got completely on top of them. Um, so we did some research um, right back at the beginning of the pandemic that showed that 42% of people had put off going to their GP about non-related COVID issues yeah. because they didn't want to overwhelm the NHS service. Um, they didn't want to bother their GP. Um, and we also then looked at, at where women were getting help from. And we saw that most women were turning to Google um, or they were turning to family and friends for information. So we really had that, that sort of knowledge there then that um, they were putting it off. And I think that, that's, that's really so true, isn't it? I know through all the work that I've done with menopause over the years, you know, women, even not in a pandemic time, put off going to the GP because they don't want to seem to be bothersome. You know, it's just, oh, it's exactly. just my hormones. It's, it's just a hot flush. Mm. It's just lack of sleep. It's just a bit of anxiety. And so, you know, we're already pushing ourselves down the bottom of the healthcare pile, if you like. And then, you, you yeah. know, you layer on, you know, pandemic and lockdown on top of that. And of course, increasing levels of anxiety. I think this is one of the things that I've picked up with my audience here is we don't realise, I think, how impactful the lack of estrogen is in relation to anxiety. You know, we may, we may think of menopausal symptoms as hot flushes and, and, and the like, but can you talk us through a little bit about why estrogen should be so, um, well, impactful, for want of a better word, to have such a strong connection with anxiety? Um, we know that estrogen just affects pretty much every, every single system in our body and it has a huge impact on the, on the brain and our emotions. Um, and so those lowering levels um, are, are just going to affect how, how you feel and how you deal with things. So we know that millions yeah. of British women um, were struggling with that sort of increased anxiety and sleepless nights through the pandemic. Um, and so that's why we want to be there for them and, and, and be that lifeline that they might need. Um, and I think the yeah. worry with the anxiety is it's, it's going to be 
prevent women from returning to a normal life now. Um, you know, a lot of women, when they, they suffer with the anxiety of the menopause, feel worried about going out. Um, they have mm. a lower self-confidence, a lower self-esteem. They can really suffer in the workplace because they feel that they're just not up to doing their job anymore. We have this real imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all of these things, the low mood, the feeling tearful, it really affects how you function, not just at work, but at home as well. Um, and so that is why it is just so important that, that we make women aware that um, it is one of the, the common symptoms of the menopause and yet one that women don't always necessarily attribute yeah. to the menopause or don't feel happy to talk about it. Yeah. I think it, it's such a double whammy, isn't it? It's like we've been really hit with a sledgehammer hard because you, you're in that state potentially where your hormones are declining. So you're more likely to feel anxious. Um, perhaps yeah. you don't realize it. And then this extraordinary social anxiety. I mean, I see it with young women as well. And people just not wanting to go out. They've, they've been, you know, so used to lockdowns. They've been, you know, watching the news 24-7. And th this level of anxiety is just sort of all pervasive. It's like societal anxiety. And I think if you put, you know, lower levels of hormones on top of that, it's, it's going to be quite a job, isn't it, to, to break through that and, and to say to women, listen, there are things that we can do. It is important to get medical help. There are simple, effective, safe treatments. Definitely. And that's why we want to get the word out. We, we know that yeah. as people have been turning more to family and friends for advice, it may be that they've been given incorrect um, information about the yes. safety of HRT. <laughs> they might have been told it's being dangerous. Um, they might have yeah. had friends or, or family members that have said, oh, well, I got through it. No problem. You know, put yourself together, get on with it. That's what we do. So, again, we don't want women to feel afraid and to, to turn and ask for help and, and feel that they're a failure in doing so. Mm, absolutely. I mean, I think many women may have been struggling with symptoms for quite a long time now, pandemic notwithstanding. Can this get sorted quickly with the Bupa plan? I mean, is it designed to really give some immediate relief for women? It definitely is. So um, our Bupa plan, um, it's not a one size fits all. Um, we know that every woman is different. So we're going to generate a personalized plan with them. Um, but we have plenty of availability and plenty of time. So right. our appointments are geared um, to be a 45 minute initial appointment with the GP. Um, so we've got the 45 minutes initially to offer with our patient to have a good chat about anything menopause related um, and to come up with a plan together of how we might manage that. So we'll talk through um, all of those symptoms they may be experiencing and the lifestyle ways that they can manage those as well because mm -hmm. as you know Liz there's a lot that we can do with our lifestyle um, to make the symptoms better um, and make our, our long-term risk of disease decrease as well because mm -hmm. that's the other thing that we shouldn't forget with the menopause and the lower estrogen levels it's not just about the symptoms they're experiencing now it's our long-term health risk that increase as well yeah um, Obviously, we'll have a chat about HRT. And for most women, we know that the benefits far outweigh any risks of taking mm. HRT. Um, so that will be considered. We will consider sort of non-hormonal methods as well if, if they want to, to look at that too. Um, but, you know, we'll make sure that they get a, a really balanced discussion of the risks and the benefits and, and what would be right for them um, and why we feel that um, to come to a, a conclusion together of what's going to be the appropriate management for them. And I know that as a medic, you are very much in touch with uh, one of my all-time well-being warriors, Dr. Louise Newson, aka the Menopause Doctor. And yes. I know that you're very much on the same page here. So Definitely. It's, it's just Definitely. such a delight, frankly. <laughs> and, yes, and with the yeah. Menopause Charity and the Balance app and all, all of those great things that are happening, you know, it really does feel that there is this extraordinary opportunity. I think Davina, Davina McCall was, was just so great with her documentary in, in opening up awareness. But I think it's been you know, absolutely fantastic. The response to Davina's documentary in particular yeah. has made so many women come forward and, and seek the advice that's right for them. Uh, yeah. We've had women that went through the menopause years ago and, and suffered and have now realized that, you know, they could and, and should have HRT. Um, and so they're coming to us now, which, which has been fantastic. So I can't thank them enough for the work that they've done. It, it, it's extraordinary. And I think, you know, what, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm very keen to, to get this word out, particularly about the Bupa plan, is exactly what you're saying there. It's about the time. You know, your first first appointment with with a doctor is 45 minutes. So that is a really good length of time. And you can go in with your list of symptoms. Tell me, does that happen face to face or is it online or is it a combination? I was of just going to add that. 
Yeah, so it can be either. So it can be face to face and we have a number of clinics across the country. Um, mm -hmm. It can also be via video consultation or telephone consultation. Um, so there's a right. number of options there. So, yeah. And, and you know, at, at a time when it's convenient for, for the woman. And then what happens after that? So you've got your initial consultation. So from that, you may well be given your HRT prescription or something might be tweaked or there'll be various suggestions made. It, it, what happens after that? Because obviously, you know, as you said before, it's not one size fits all, is it? It's Often a these journey, things yes. Reviewing, yeah. Exactly, it's a journey. So at that initial appointment, if a lady needs um, any further investigations, they can be arranged. Um, if she needs any referral to secondary care, um, we have um, specialist women's health physios, which are great um, resource great. for us to be able to access um, in-house as well. Um, and she may need some additional mental health stuff with some cognitive behavioural therapy. So we've got all of that at hand. Um, we would also ask the, the woman's advice to, to keep in touch with her NHS GP in the hope that, you know, mm. if needed, they, she can go forward with them as well so um, we would do that and we also provide access to a 24 7 nursing helpline for a year after that initial appointment all our nurses are really? specially trained as well so they are absolutely fantastic and, and another great resource for the woman to be able to access um, and, and so they when, are when being used all the time uh, is it literally 20, 24, 24 hours a day seven, seven days a week five days a wow. year yeah yeah, really. Yeah. And so, so for a whole year, yeah. you can pick up the phone and you can talk to somebody qualified. Yes. That's and you know, you've got them there. Exactly. Exactly. So that's... I think it's, it's, it was, yeah, it's invaluable. And how, how, it? it's how so new is, is this, is this menopause plan? Um, so we would see, see the first um, initial appointment and then after three months, we would review um, the woman again um, mm -hmm. and then provide sort of any continuing care. Um, and then they can, if they wanted to come back to us, they can pay for ongoing appointments. Or as I said, we can yeah. get the NHS GP to take it over. That's really good, isn't it? So it just gives you that confidence, yeah. that kind of initial step. And I think hopefully we're exactly. seeing more and more GPs being trained. I mean, that was the other one of the other issues, wasn't it? Was, exactly. was really getting yes. NHS training. And I know the menopause charity have been so brilliant with that, with their module that 14 Fish devised, have, which is the yes. NHS um, approved. So it's really good that it's, it doesn't have to be either or. You know, you're you're filling this this gap in hopefully a relatively affordable way for the quality of care and the information I mean it's just it's going to be a lifeline isn't it I, I mean I personally think you're going to be swamped yes. I hope you've got lots of doctors <laughs> we have and we've been very busy and um yeah it, it's it's really going well at the moment yeah. um and I'm sure it will continue to do so yeah what are the other main symptoms that women are coming to you with because I think historically when we've talked about menopause it's been oh it's a hot flush um, but for me, I mean, I, I, I take HRT and I've been taking it for years. I've never had a hot flush. I mean, I very occasionally in the early days, I think I woke up feeling slightly warm, but you know, that, that was never my thing. And I didn't really join the dots. You know, I had things like vertigo and tinnitus, um, without realizing that the hearing issues I were ha was having was due to the lack of estrogen in, in, in my ears. Um, I would get achy joints mm. and achy bones. And I know many women who get yeah. sort of misdiagnosed with arthritis or, you know, some, you know, re referred to rheumatologists. You know, what yes, do you exactly have a, right. a, a, so, a, you know, a, a yeah, key I, list of symptoms? Um, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, we, we see a lot of women that have been sent from specialist to specialist and, and nobody's quite put those pieces of the jigsaw together. Um, and, and you're exactly right. Everybody knows about hot flushes and night sweats, um, but don't necessarily attribute the other symptoms to the menopause. They say there's 34 symptoms. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think there's probably many, many more. And, and that goes I back to, as I said before. Yeah. Definitely. Um, estrogen affects so many parts of the body. So um, the mental health aspect we've talked about already. I know for you, it was sleep was a big issue as well, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, and I, I see a lot of mm. women whose sleep is disturbed, not just because, you know, they're having a night sweat, but just their sleep is not as good anyway. And, and we know that's due to mm -hmm. the, the cycling of the hormones and, and how that affects the brain and, and our, our sleep pattern and, and how deep a sleep we can get into. Um, and then that does affect your day to day functioning, then, doesn't it? I mean, we know that women suffer with yeah. poor memory, poor concentration, and of course, sleep is going to make that worse. Um, it's, yeah. It also will affect our long term health. It can affect our appetite. It can affect our risk of heart disease, all sorts of, of other issues that, that that lack of sleep um, goes on to, to have. Mm. 
Um, mm. So, yes, sleep's a common one. The achy joints, as you said, um, a lot of women don't realise that. The other one that women don't like to talk about, and I know you have before, is vaginal dryness. Um, and this is yes. something that we really want to, to, to raise awareness <laughs> of too. And, and I ask all my doctors to specifically bring it up with women. And actually, I had a woman in the clinic yesterday and she wasn't going to say anything. And when I said something about it, she said, oh, I'm so pleased you've said that. I didn't know if I could mention it, but but you are a doctor, aren't you? Um, and so it, it is so common that, you know, again, they say at least 40 percent of women suffer with that. I'm sure it's more, um, but only 25 percent of women are willing to talk about it. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, when I, you know, I've had a couple of glasses of wine and we're chatting about it with girlfriends, it's, it's, it seems to be 100 percent. You know, I have yet to, to talk to yeah. a midlife woman who who is not affected by it. And, you know, yeah. of course, we're not just talking about sex, although that's obviously, you know, a large part of it. But it's things like recurrent UTIs, urinary tract infections. Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, urinary frequency as well. Yeah, Women yeah. don't like to come for Inconstant. their smear test because it hurts so much. So, again, it's yeah. worth just, again, bringing up. Um, and I'd encourage nurses in practice to, to bring that up with women if they see that a woman hasn't been for her smear test that might be the reason why so it's, it's definitely worth mentioning um, and there's no need to suffer because there's lots of things that we can do um, yeah. we know that the hormones that are very safe to use topical estrogen even for women that have had breast cancer in, in the majority of cases yeah. um, but you know there's vaginal lubricants there's moisturizers there are newer exciting treatments coming along as well mm. um, a laser therapy different hormone treatments um, so the, the, there's, there's lots of things we can do so um, yeah that, that's definitely high up on my agenda Gender to make sure that I, I raise that with, with every woman I see. Extraordinary how, I mean, I, I've done podcasts talking about incontinence, for example, and just how that whole bladder sensitivity changes with, with loss of estrogen and how simply replacing a little bit can be literally life-changing, transformational it, it really for is. so many women. Absolutely is, yes. Now, you, you, um, you talk okay. about cancer patients and, you know, and others is there really, you know, can, can any woman access this kind of treatment? So somebody who's perhaps had a hysterectomy, maybe perimenopause, younger women, we know that, you know, it is rarer, but not, you know, unheard of, and unfortunately, mm. not that uncommon to go through menopause early in life, you know, particularly with surgical Definitely. menopause, can, you know, is this something that is open for all ages? It definitely is. So, um, yes, as you said, we know that um, a lot of women will go through the menopause at an earlier age and we don't necessarily always find a cause for that. Um, so one in a thousand under 30, one in a hundred under 40. So this is not a, a condition of old women. No. Um, and again, I think part of the awareness campaign is, is making people realise that, that, you know, there could be anybody um, in your workplace or, or in your group of friends that is going through something and, and you won't necessarily know just just by their age um yeah. so yes it, it's open to anybody um and we would obviously as, as it is such a, a personalized um tailored approach to our, our treatment we would take that into account any of their comorbidity mm. and and you know their thoughts and feelings about you know what can be done and, and what they want to do um talking about age yes. can we just talk about the upper age limit because you know if, if I just throw in a kind of a personal story here my mother was on HRT for many many years and, and did incredibly well on it and then I think when she kind of hit 70 her GP said oh I think it's probably time for you to stop that now you know you don't need that anymore so she stopped taking it and didn't really think too much about the symptoms uh, she didn't ever sleep particularly well after that but just put that down to old age and it was really only through talking to, to Dr. Louise Newson that I realized that it would be possible for her to, to go back on it. And it did, unfortunately, take the consultations of three different doctors. But we got there. Wow. It was actually on her 80th yeah. birthday. It was my 80th birthday present Aww. to her. <laughs> I was going back <laughs> on to each other. <laughs> and she now sleeps through the night. And, and she's given me permission yeah. to share this. Yeah. So she, you know, she's quite open about it. Because yeah. Yeah. sleep is fundamental. And I know we tend to sleep it less is. well. Yeah. As we age, what's your view on that? And, and what's the kind of booper view in terms of upper age limit to talk to women about this? So we would completely agree with, with what you've just said. So um, the NICE guidance is very clear that, that there is no upper age limit. So for most women, um, you know, as, as long as we give them a safe preparation, and as I said before, taking any comorbidities into account, we would give transdermal estrogen, which I'm sure is what your mum has, and, and make sure yes, that it has, has progesterone as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's absolutely fine. And we are finding, um, you know, that, that with this awareness now, 
women are coming back to us, you know, a long time after their menopause um, with lots of debilitating symptoms, you know, particularly the, the vaginal atrophy, because that is the long term effects of estrogen deficiency. Um, and so we are able to help them still. So they don't need to feel that it, it's too late and nothing can now be done. Yeah. Um, so, yes, the, the, no upper age limit at all. And, and like I said, no minimum so age great, limit either. You know, I, I hear yeah. that from, from my, my audience and my readers time and time again. Women are told, well, you know, you're 60 now. That's it. Time to come off all of that time to stop it yeah, yeah. and you know we know that that's wrong uh and you know I, yeah. I think it's oh gosh this is just so it's giving me goosebumps yeah. actually it's just so, so yeah. cheery to hear it all what about things like osteoporosis because we also know that estrogen is just so helpful for protecting bone density and helping with osteoporosis is that something that you would also look at Definitely. So, um, again, you know, we would talk about lifestyle ways of measuring, uh, of monitoring. Excuse me, I'll start again. We would talk about <laughs> lifestyle ways of managing that. So um, we advise weight bearing exercise. Um, Mm -hmm. Yoga and Pilates, as I'm sure you know, are absolutely excellent as well. We talk mm -hmm. about taking vitamin D so we don't get enough sunlight in this country. I, I know that's not true at the moment, but normally we don't get enough sunlight. Yeah. Uh, so I do recommend that all women take 10 micrograms of vitamin D daily um, and other family members should be doing that anyway, to be honest. Um, we talk about mm. making sure you get enough calcium in your diet um, and we can point women to a resource where there is a calcium calculator online to ensure that they are getting enough calcium. Um, mm. And again, HRT, that is one of the, the, the treatment um, under the age of 50 and, and you know, four treating osteoporosis anyway yeah. um and so we would talk about um you know the, the benefits that that would have mm, that's just so encouraging i mean it is really great to hear you talking about hrt in such a positive light and you know there are just so many misconceptions and you know hormone therapy is is not as you've said before it's not one size fits all which is why this individual consultation is so important do women come back and they have the option to come back and discuss things like types of hormone and dosage? You know, you may be lucky. I, I was lucky. I, I got it right first time round or I, not wow, me getting that was it lucky. right, but it yeah. was right for me for, for first time round. Yeah. But I know for many women, it is a little bit of trial and error. And I think that's often the frustration with GPs who are short of time. They'll just say, well, it doesn't work for you. So never mind, have some antidepressants mm -hmm. and go away instead. What's the kind of the review process and how important is that? So the aftercare is so important. So we would follow up women at um, approximately 12 weeks. They can bring that forward a little bit or delay it a little bit if they wanted. In mm -hmm. the initial prescription that we've given, we are often using um, things like estrogel where a woman can be advised how to increase her dose up in the meantime if she needed to anyway. So um, there is yeah. a little bit of, of dosage adjustment that she can do herself before she sees us again. Um, but we would definitely review at 12 weeks, make any necessarily tweaks that are needed then and then um, you know talk about ongoing care whether that then be back with the NHS GP or continuing care with us we're very happy to provide that yeah. um, and we would advise a woman how to do so she's still got that um, access as well to the anytime healthline nurses um, so again she can keep That's talking amazing. to them um, yeah. and you know be advised with, with what else she may need to it's, it's great I mean it would be a great present Actually, it'd be a great gift. It wouldn't would. It? You know, it would. You, you could it gift really it to would. your best friend. Yeah. You could gift it to your mother. Yeah. You know, somebody yeah. having a significant yeah. birthday. You know, um, yeah. what a great health so. check. And what a great thing yeah. also for employers actually thinking about it. You know, Definitely. It, it, we're doing a lot something. of work with our corporate clients. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, talking about management and menopause in the workplace. And, totally. Um, yeah, I totally get yeah, that. You so know, we're, we're losing far too many senior women in key roles because they're not being helped through this. And I know that actually Dr. Newsom's done a lot of work with the West Midlands police because they realised that they were losing a lot of senior women in their 50s who were just deciding that they couldn't cope with the insomnia and the anxiety and the stress levels and you know obviously policing is a very stressful job anyway exactly and, and yeah. the force was yeah. really suffering because these incredibly talented wise experienced women were yeah. after yeah. so many decades were, were just leaving and we see that across all professions you know teaching nursing yeah. it's yeah. Uh, you know the legal profession judiciary I mean it's just extraordinary yeah. this is yeah. I think it should almost be mandatory um you know for, for employers and certainly I guess it's a conversation anybody listening to this you know if if you are in in an organization that does have a good HR team it's something to raise and say well you know is this mm -hmm. something that could yeah. be offered for, for for female employees 
That's it. And we have done a lot of work. Um, we've done some with the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, and they've got mm -hmm. a great guide um, that people can access if they, they Google that. Um, and I do quite yeah. a lot of talks to our corporate customers. Um, so it's great now that, that it really is sort of um, being addressed in the workplace as well. Um, yeah, and it's and, been you know, we, do, we want women to not feel alone and, and to feel that they, yeah. they we are with them throughout the whole process and, and that it will come yeah. out the other side, um, but to not give up and that there is help available. Yeah. Now we've talked obviously a lot about HRT, um, which, you know, we're, we're both big fans of, so that's good. But of course, it's not all yeah. HRT. And I know that a lot of your consultations also involve other lifestyle advice, things like diet and exercise. You know, can you perhaps walk us through some of the other lifestyle advice that you might be giving women? Yes, so uh, we follow the NICE guidance for sort of lifestyle advice that we give. So um, a healthy, balanced diet, uh, usually Mediterranean based, uh, lots of fibre to help with the bowels, um, but also got to be mindful that your cholesterol may increase after the menopause. We know that women's yeah. uh, risk of heart disease increases after the menopause as well. And, and that is the, the biggest killer in women, although a lot of women don't realise that. Um, so yeah. we talk that through with them. And, and that's what Bupa do a lot of that sort of work anyway. In our health assessments, we are always um, talking about all these lifestyle measures that we can take to improve our lifestyle. So that's something that our doctors are very used to doing. Uh, mm. So we talk about that. We talk about exercise, as I already said, um, not just to reduce your risk of osteoporosis, but to also maintain your muscle mass and your strength. Uh, we also know that it's very good for mindfulness and it's very good for mm. alleviating some of those symptoms of hot flushes and night sweats because there's definitely association with stress. Uh, so we'll talk talk them through you know what they should be doing the government guidance is that you should be doing two mm. and a half hours of cardio exercise a week but also a couple of resistance sessions as well so we'll talk through all that uh, we'll talk through the vitamin d um, and calcium as i said before mm. um, and we'll also talk through some um ways that they can improve their sleep i know ultimately it, it's hrt usually that you need to do that but um Sleep hygiene is still very important. So to make sure that you're not drinking too much alcohol, um, avoiding caffeine, um, caffeinated drinks in the evening, not having chocolate, unfortunately, because that can affect it as well. I know, not dark chocolate. I'm such a massive <laughs> yeah, fan of the yeah. polyphenols and dark chocolate, but my, my, my cup is shame. like 3.30, 4 o'clock. That's, that's it. it. That's and it. And again, I... women don't realise that. So <laughs> yeah. have it earlier on in the day, yeah. definitely, but not. not. And don't exercise too late. Um, some really? women, unfortunately, make the mistake of exercising too late. And if you exercise within two and a half hours, uh, two hours of bedtime, mm. you're not going to sleep as well. So um, please exercise, but don't do it too late into the evening. Um, and we'll talk about a good wind down routine. So stepping away from devices, don't go near the blue light. That's no good for us. Mm. Making sure the room is at a decent temperature. So 18 degrees. Um, so not too yeah, hot. I was say 18 degrees, um, that, that is quite cool, isn't it? It is, it is cool. But, you know, we all know that we, we, we do tend to overheat when we're going through the menopause. So yeah. staying cool, being in a dark room as well, mm. and trying to make it as quiet as possible. Mm. Um, all of these things definitely do make a difference. Yeah. Um, I talk about magnesium supplements. Yeah. And I know, again, you, you're aware of these. Yeah. Um, Big but, fan of You know, magnesium. a lot of women find that magnesium citrate helps. Mm -hmm. um, and some women may choose to, to look at melatonin as well. So we know that, um, you know, there is evidence that, that some of these supplements will help mm. too. So we'll have a chat about that and, and see what they want to try. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, that, that's what we can do to sort of help with sleep. Alcohol, as I already said, keep that to a minimum, um, less than 14 units a week. Uh, we've got our long term sort of health consequences of that to think about. But also in the mm. short term, it, it makes the sleep worse. It makes our stress levels worse. Um, you know, it, it has that a huge difference on the way that we function. Mm -hmm. So definitely keeping alcohol to a minimum um, and stopping smoking. Obviously, I'd recommend that to anybody yes. anyway, but particularly important again, because of those risks of heart disease. Yes. Uh, so all of those sort of lifestyle measures we would discuss in the consultation. Yeah. And then, you know, before we go, just let's sort of think about the future. I know that there are so many new studies coming out that are so positive, particularly on the effects of estrogen, for example, and looking at potential health for Alzheimer's, dementia, improving cognitive function, these you know, really scary brain uh, impact on our health that we can have mm. as we age and also help with heart disease. I would imagine that actually, you know, one reason that, that Bupa is probably quite pleased to be involved in, in this area of healthcare for, for menopausal women and to get help is that it's actually going to help prevent a lot of these, exactly. these things that, that you're seeing later yeah. on. You know, you don't want to be flooded with 
lots of cases of all kinds of ill health. And you know, if we can sort out these menopause issues early and prevent them from becoming, you know, really debilitating diseases that need extreme treatment later on. Exactly. So, I mean, we already know that um, heart disease is the biggest killer in women and the HRT mm. has been shown in some studies. Um, if you start it under the age of 60 or within 10 years of your menopause, you reduce your risk of heart disease by up to 50 percent. So 50%. Um, you that can't argue with that. Can you? I mean, it? Yeah, it is staggering. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's amazing that we don't put more emphasis onto that. Um, well, well, as we've well, already well, said, well, we charities. Well, I mean, why are they not know, about know. that? You know, you, you get exactly you know, small incremental benefits from you you know, other kinds of treatments, everyone's banging on about statins mm. or whatever. But, you know, when you get a yeah. significant statistic like that, yeah. that yeah. is something yeah. that they, you know, that, that, that everybody should be just shouting about for sure. Exactly. Exactly. I think there's just been so much negative press in the past. Um, you mentioned before the Women's Health Initiative study. We know that that um, really does af has affected the way that, that, you know, everyone perceives HRT. Um, and there's been all this focus on, on the breast cancer risk over the years and, and just not enough on the benefits of, of HRT. Um, so it's really time now to start shouting about those. Um, risk of osteoporosis. We know that fractured hip, again, is a huge cause of morbidity and mortality in this country uh, so anything we can do to reduce that risk and, and get women exercising and improve their balance as well that's going to have a huge knock-on effect of sort of these long-term health costs uh, which you know society has to, to bear really don't we so yeah, um, yeah we you know, do. It, it, <laughs> Yeah, and, and lots of evidence, as you said, coming out about um, reduced risk of diabetes, of osteoarthritis, mm. of Alzheimer's disease, of colon cancer. Um, so there, there's still a huge yeah. amount of research ongoing in this in this area, but it just all looks so promising. It, it, it does feel an exciting turning point. You know, when I first started writing about this and talking about it, maybe five, six years ago, it, it felt like we were all rolling a huge rock up a very, very steep hill. Um, and I, I think now, I, I'm not sure that we're quite at the top of the hill, but I think we're getting near it. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we'll be free to joyfully run down the other side and just live our lives, you know, feel released from the, the, so many of, of the pressures. And, you know, life, it's about quality of life, isn't it? At the end of the day, Definitely. it's about having this amazing... Yeah you know, body, this place that is the only place that we have to live is, is our body. And, you know, can we please look after it and, and just make the best of it? And just before we go, one of the things that I really picked up on all the time that we've been talking about this is you've been using the word talking. And I think, you know, as women, we do, we do like to talk, but we need to have good information, evidence-based, safe clinical information. And the fact that you've got this opportunity to talk, you know, to start with that confidential talk one to one with with a doctor for 45 minutes, then you'll follow up. But the fact that you've got access 24 seven for a whole year to talk, yeah, I mean, yeah, to pick up the phone yeah. and, and talk to somebody and, and share is is just amazing. I'm, I'm so, yeah, so thrilled yeah. with everything that you're doing and, and so pleased to be kind of part of that and to be able to, to promote you. it here. Thank you. Yeah, we have a wealth of information as well on our Women's Health Hub on the Booper website, which is free mm -hmm. for anybody to look at. Um, and we're really proud of the resource that we built up there. So before we actually see a woman, uh, we'll send her out a, a pre-appointment questionnaire with a symptom checker and links to that information. Mm -hmm. um, we want our women to be well in informed and well educated. We want them to question us about, you know, decisions and, and make the right choice for them. So uh, we'll ensure that they are signposted, you know, and, uh, to, to all the information that, that we know, um, you know, is it, it's so evidence-based and, and so robust yeah. and, and make sure that they are, you know, as well informed as, as they can be. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's so great to chat. I wish you huge, huge good luck with it. I think it's an amazing initiative. Thank you. Thank um, you for your support as well. Thank no, you. No, seriously, I'm, I'm absolutely couldn't be more delighted. And for anybody listening here or watching, if you'd like to find more about the Booper Menopause Plan, then you can head over to the Lizard Wellbeing website. You'll find information on there. We'll pop a link in the bottom of this video if you are watching on YouTube. And of course, there's also the Booper website. But Dr. Sam, thank you and look forward to being in thank touch you. again with you very soon, I hope. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you.